everybody. Welcome in. Happy Saturday to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me and letting me be a part of your Saturday today. Guys, I've got a really cool project for you guys that is relatively simple, but the technique, there are actually two techniques that are involved in this that I think that you are going to be able to take and use in other ways, not just specific to this project. So I'm hoping that that will definitely um, stick with you and you'll be inspired to take this into your own jewelry making. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah Lovecraft. I am a designer for Beadalon and am here for Michaels to teach you guys a really cool way to um, personalize your smartwatch. Now, I always get asked, and I've been asked all week leading up to this class, what if I don't have a smartwatch? Wh why would I want to take this class? I've actually got um, a little something to show you for those of you who don't have a smartwatch because this, this technique will apply in some other areas and is really kind of specific to, uh, to elastic um, when it comes to elasticity or other stretchy elastic cords. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep talking. I'm gonna get right down to it so we can get started with today's project. All right, so for today's project, you're just gonna need actually just a minimum amount of things, right? This, and that's cool. <laughs> we like it when it doesn't take a whole lot of stuff to put together our project. So let's start with beads because I think have some really beautiful ones, but you can always pick out whatever kind of beads you want to use for your project. So I have these, whoops, these pink check glass beads. And if you ask me, they're more of like a rose gold, but they are definitely uh, considered uh, pink on the card here. It says uh, check glass pink six millimeter fire polish. They're so, so pretty. Really, really beautiful. And of course you can substitute these with any color that you want to. I'm gonna sit those over here. And then I've got two strands of sunstone in eight millimeter, just so you can see what the little card looks like if you're shopping for those, right? And these are beautiful. And they look really, really pretty mixed with these check glass beads, okay? So as far as beads, that's it, except for these little spacers. So I got these metal multi-dot rondelles. I just call these daisy spacers. And the daisy spacers come in that kind of red copper color and then in that brass color. I'm gonna be using the copper colored ones for this project. And I, you can see I've got plenty left over. All right, so some of the other things that you're gonna need is something to cut with you're probably gonna want to have some hypo cement, which is just some, some glue. I like the hypo cement because it has the little precision, precision tip. That's what we're gonna be using on our knot today. You're also gonna need some elasticity. Now the elasticity you can get on the Michaels website. I'm using the clear in 0.5 millimeter. This also comes in 0.8 millimeter as well as one millimeter. Keep in mind when you're, when you're deciding what millimeter to buy, uh, the whole size of your bead. That's gonna be really, really important. I want, to double, I want to double thread my elasticity through my bead. So I wanna be sure that I use a small size of elasticity in comparison to the whole size of my bead because I gotta double it, right? Which seems kind of counterintuitive because a lot of times we tell you with stringing projects, you want to use the thickest millimeter of stringing material to fill up the whole of your bead. But with this, it's a little different because like I said, we're gonna double it. So you gotta take all of that into consideration as well. You can also get the elasticity on the Michaels website in black. It also comes in the 0.5 millimeter, 0.8 millimeter and one millimeter. And there is some silver that comes in just the 0.8 millimeter. But for today, I'm using the clear. It tends to disappear nicely in our project. And that's, that's kind of the goal. I want this to be as seamless as possible. All right, so for the smartwatch that I have, I've got the square face of um, the smartwatch. And I have these little connectors. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of smartwatch you have or what the connectors look like. They're all basically made the same way. Um, basically, you're gonna end up with a bar and your connection to, of course, attach to your watch face. Now, let's say you don't have a smartwatch, but you still want a really cool stretchy bracelet. Maybe you want to do a multi-strand design. Let me show you something that is actually not on the materials list. So my apologies for that, but you can find a lot of these on the Michaels website. So let's say, for instance, you're using these spacer bars. These are bead landing spacer bars. And they have a single 
loop on one side, but then they have the multi-strand loops here in the center. Let's say that if you if you've got these and you want to make the same kind of design and let's see, probably hold them this direction. So maybe you have a focal here in the center, but you want multi-strands coming off of the focal and you want it to be seamless because it's stretch. This kind of connector is gonna work for this exact same kind of project. So if you don't have a smartwatch band or a smartwatch, you're, you're not out of luck with this. This technique's gonna work in situations like this, okay? All right, so I did see a question go by that said, where did I get my smartwatch connectors? So I think I got these on Etsy, to be completely honest with you, I'm not sure. I've had them for a little while, but if you just look up smartwatch band connectors um, on Google, you can, you can find a ton of these that will fit whatever shape your smartwatch is. All right, so we're going to be using the elasticity, like I mentioned before, I'm using the clear. One of the things that you want to do with elasticity every time you use elasticity is you want to cut off the length that you're going to use, and you, then you want to pre-stretch it. It's really, really important that you pre-stretch because if you don't, Gravity will take over and the weight of your beads will stretch it out and then you'll end up with a bracelet or jewelry design that kind of sags on you, right? You think you filled it up nice and tight, but once it gets stretched out, it won't be nice and full anymore. So I always pull off or I cut off what I need and then I pull it to uh, pre-stretch it. So you're gonna need four strands of this because we're gonna do a four strand band and you just want to cut about 12 to 14 inches of this and of course pre-stretch it. So I've pre-stretched those two, I've got two more to go. And you can definitely feel a difference after you've pre-stretched it. Now it doesn't take away the stretchiness. Uh, it, it just ensures that you've got it completely pulled out so that it's not going to stretch even further on you, right? All right. Now the 0.5 millimeter is pretty thin, so that's why I like to double it. Just gives that extra, extra amount of strength in your beads. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our little connectors. Now I've taken them off of the watch. I find that it's much easier to work that way. If I take them off, of the watch, okay? And I'm gonna start with one of our pieces of elasticity. So I'm gonna sit these over here to the side. We're gonna start with our, um, our outer strand, but really you can start wherever you want to. It doesn't really make any, any difference. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the elasticity and I'm gonna loop it around our smartwatch component. Now, if that were uh, the little metal component, I would just loop through the loop, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of fold that in half. I don't wanna tie a knot up here next to my component. Just, I don't like the way that that looks. Now, if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. But this technique is all about hiding that knot and making this look as seamless as possible, okay? So fold your elasticity in half after you've looped it around your component. Now, what we want to do is we want to take our two ends together Okay, and we're going to thread on part of our strand. Okay, so I'm going to do a little pattern that is three of our check glass rounds, and that's going on both strands because we folded it in half, right? So three check glass beads. We've got a lot of stringing in this project today. And then I'm going to thread on a daisy spacer onto both. And then three more check glass beads. So we're going to do seven groups of the check glass beads. I'm going to do, I'm going to do four of these. And then I'm going to show you what the technique is to make this as seamless as possible. So there's our second group of three. I'm going to thread on our daisy spacer. thread on three more and again you can do whatever pattern you want to the most important part with a multi-strand design particularly when it's a bracelet or a watch is just making sure that this each strand is as even as possible so that it wears really well this one's not exact uh, but it's pretty darn close 
All right, so I'm gonna thread on three more of our check glass beads and I'm not gonna thread on that last daisy spacer yet. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull all those beads down right up next to the component, okay? Now I'm gonna take my two strands of elasticity and I'm gonna split those apart. And what I want to do now is I wanna take one of those strands of the elasticity and loop it around the component, right? Again, I don't wanna tie a knot right here. I just, I don't like the way the knot looks <laughs> up against the component. It makes those little, those little pieces where you have to cut it, it makes like little, I don't know, just little stray ends. And I'm just not, not necessarily a fan of that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to thread on our, let's see here. I can't remember how we did this. <laughs> It's taking a second here. All right, so we've looped through. We're gonna thread on the rest of our beads, okay? So we're going to thread on three. So remember, we're doing groups of seven. So we've got three more of the little groups here. And I know this seems a little weird, just, just bear with me. So there's three, there's the daisy spacer. There's three more. A daisy spacer. I'm starting to second guess myself. <laughs> How did I do this again? It's been so long since I put this project together. I'm like, mm, this is a little weird, a little weird, but it's not, it's not. All right, so there's our last three, All right? And then our daisy spacer. Okay, so now what we gotta do <laughs> is we gotta make this as seamless as possible. I did, let's see. And to do that, we've got to take, now don't pull them off of this strand. Let me lower you down a little bit so you can see, okay. You've got only just a little short amount of elasticity here. Don't let them slip off of this strand. If you've got like a bead bug you can put right here to hold those on, that's what you wanna do. Otherwise, what we wanna do is we wanna take this strand, remember where we, we split these apart? We wanna take this strand and we're gonna, whoops, again, don't, don't lose them. Hold on, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull some of that length here, right? Cause I just don't want them to slip off of that strand. All right, now we've got to take this strand and go up through all of those beads. I really feel like I'm not doing this correctly, you guys, but we're gonna go up through because that's what gives these beads the extra, that extra strength. So the deal is, is that your knot can go anywhere. Don't pull them off of that first strand, okay? Your knot can go anywhere next to a bead, but you don't want it to go next to your component. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sorry, you can't see, I'm sliding, the beads we already thread on. Okay, I'm doubling that strand up. So you see how when we get up here, the first ones that we thread on will have that double, double strand of elasticity going through them, right? Okay, now pull. You've got your ends in two different places. This did not work out. Where did that other end go? <laughs> I lost the first end. Oh my goodness, you guys. Yeah. 
and I pulled it completely off. Of course I did, because it's going to be that kind of day. I am so sorry. Well, this is my first Michael's class experience where I have completely, completely messed it up. All right. Starting over, split your two strands. I figured out what I did. I'm sorry, it just took me a second. Okay, you split the two strands, then go ahead and thread on your beads. I'm so sorry. It's a good thing that that came off because it all came back, rushing back to me. <laughs> I know we go back through these beads. Oh, goodness. It's all right. Danielle is here. <laughs> and she said she had the same kind of day yesterday. So she's totally with me. I'm glad I'm not the only one. It happens to all of us, right? It's just like your brain just, you know, it's like I've done this project a million times, but for whatever reason today, it's just not working out. Okay, so don't look through your component yet. You guys, I've got this, trust me. <laughs> all right, we're just keeping it real, right? What is the length of the strand? So the strand overall, of course, we've cut, um, we've cut 12 inches of our elasticity. The strand overall, I'll tell you right now, is going to be, it's going to be right at about five and a half inches, right? And it's got to be shorter because you got to take into consideration the face of your watch plus your little components here, right? So if you're looking for um, a seven and a half inch bracelet or a seven and a half inch wrist, you got to subtract the amount of the face of your watch or whatever kind of component or focal you're going to put if it's not a watch, right? And then subtract the measurement of these as well, okay? So take all of that into consideration. So our strand is about five and a half inches. And once we get the watch face on here, I'll show you how, what that measurement is going to be overall. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that everything has come back to me, We've got a strand that's just rogue right here in the middle. That's exactly what we want because we've got to work our way back down to that so that our knot is going to be in the middle. Okay, so we're going to take the end. We're going to loop it through that component. <laughs> I was trying to make this way more difficult. Okay, now we want to go back down through those beads, right? So what we're doing is we're just turning around, right? Looping through the component, turning around, going back through the beads that we just added. And if you can do a few of them at a time, great. If you can only do one of them at a time, that's fine. Okay. You're working with a pretty short strand here. If you need to pull length from this, you can. Just be careful that you don't pull this all the way through because we do need that end. Okay. All right, so going back through my beads, I'm working my way back up here to that strand where we split. <laughs> oh goodness well it took us a minute to get here but we've made it I really was trying to make this way harder than it needed to be that's so funny and so typical of my brain particularly on a Saturday all good okay so back through these last three beads and we're going to meet up with that strand where it's split and now the second part of this that is a technique that you're you're definitely gonna want to, to know and take forward with you if you ever use elasticity, whether it's in this situation or if you are making just stretch bracelets, that's gonna be how to tie a knot with your elasticity that's gonna be nice and strong, okay? You don't want your knot to come undone. I've gotta take this strand and go through this last little daisy spacer here. So I like to put my knot somewhere where I can hide it if at all possible. And because my check glass beads don't have the biggest hole, I'm going to use my daisy spacer as what's actually going to hold my knot or hide my knot rather because it has a nice large hole. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to take your two ends of your elasticity and you want those to be running side by side. So instead of tying a knot in the usual way, we're going to tie an a surgeon's knot with the strands running side by side. Now, if you ever forget how to do this, I just want you to know that on the back of your elasticity, it shows you the two steps to this knot. So if you ever forget, just refer to the package because it's got that information on there for you. Okay, so we're taking our two strands together and I'm gonna loop those around my fingers or at least one finger. I try to do two just so that I can kind of stretch it apart and, 
and can get my ends through there. And since this is a surgeon's knot, we're gonna loop the ends through, not just once, but twice. Okay, so loop your ends through twice. And then you're gonna pull that down tight and I pull it down tight by very slowly taking, well, <laughs> or quickly taking my fingers out of there and then pulling, right? And that's gonna pull that knot. This one didn't get super tight because my finger slipped out, but you're basically tying, it's very similar to a barrel knot, okay? And then you're gonna come in with your cutter, right? Whatever. You can use scissors if you want to, where my scissors go? You can use scissors, you can use your cutter, whatever you've got, and you want to trim that as close as possible to your knot, but you still want to leave like maybe like a just an eighth of an inch of that, right? You can trim it off right up next to the knot after you add some hypo cement, okay? Now, the cool thing about this knot, one of the reasons why this is the best knot for elastic is because the more you pull on the knot, the tighter it gets, which means that instead of having to worry that the, the more you pull on it, it's gonna loosen up, which I find is what happens with a square knot. With this little knot, the more you pull on it, the tighter it becomes. So the more you wear it, the more you stretch it, the tighter it's gonna be, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just using my hypo cement, just in a little tiny drop on that knot. And then that knot is going to slip right into that daisy spacer and you're not even going to see it, right? So that's a seamless look. That's what I'm going for here is a seamless look. And elasticity is really good for that, particularly if you can hide your, your knot in a bead. And if you can't, that's okay too, because it's clear, it tends to just disappear in the, in the overall work. All right, so let's do another measurement real quick before we move on to the next strand. And you can see, so with our components attached now, we're right at six inches, okay? And then our watch face is an inch and a half. Well, it's a little under an inch and a half. So we're looking at roughly seven and a half inches. All right, now let's do again. So this is our outer strand and you can see there are no knots up here next to our component, which is exactly what we want. It just looks very, very seamless. We're gonna do this again with another piece of elasticity. And this time we're gonna use those sunstone beads because they're so, so pretty. So I'm gonna take my end of my next piece of elasticity. I'm gonna loop it through, right? I'm gonna take the two ends, bring those together. Okay, now I'm gonna thread on 16 of the sunstone beads. Okay, so I'm gonna thread on eight of these and then we'll split our strand, okay? And the sunstone beads have a nice large hole. So I know my knot is gonna fit inside there as well. So the double, double strands, right, for eight beads. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna separate out those strands, right? Because we have two strands, we're gonna separate them out and we're just gonna take a single strand and we're gonna thread on eight more of our sunstone beads. Okay, just onto that single strand. I looked up just in time to see somebody say, great question. Can you repeat what the question was? Cause I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, Brittany asked, do you prefer the elastic elasticity brand over stretch magic? I do. That's a great question. I do. Um, I just find that the elasticity, if you pre-stretch it, 
And particularly with the, the thinner one, if you can double, you know, double thread it through your beads, it lasts forever. It really is really strong and durable. The, I think the problem that most people have with it, now I'm just looping through my component again, and I'm going to go back down through these eight beads. I think the problem that most people have with the elasticity is that they can't get their knots tied tight enough. And and I feel like after one or two tries, they might give up with the elasticity. And I, I really think it's worth it to learn the knot that I show because that knot will last forever. And if you do add a little drop of the, um, the hypo cement to it, it, it really will last and last and last. So out of all of the elastic cords, um, I really find that the elasticity lasts for somebody, for me in particular, because I'm really hard on jewelry. Um, and I tend to put on a stretch bracelet and just wear it forever. <laughs> and elasticity lasts. It really, it gives your piece of jewelry a nice long life. All right. So now I'm down here. I've got just a tiny, tiny little bit of my strand. So I'm going to have to try to wiggle some of this length. All right. Need to borrow some length from the other side here without losing my beads. You can see I'm just kind of gently tugging on both sides and that's given me a little bit more length here to work with for my knot. Okay, all right, so again, here's that knot. I'm gonna bring the two strands together all right, you can see our single strand is running through there. That's just leave it like it is. I'm gonna take the two strands, run those side by side. I'm gonna wrap those around my fingers, okay? I'm gonna loop the ends through once and then a second time for a surgeon's knot. Now this time I'm gonna to try to go slow. Take my fingers out just one at a time and pull that knot down slowly if possible, right? until it comes together, give it a good tug. Okay, now, if you wanna hold it away from the beads while you add your hypo cement, you can before you cut it. Sometimes that works a little bit better. It just takes a little bit, okay. And you can actually go ahead and slide that into a bead if you want to. See how I just slid it right into the bead? Now cut it off. That is also very handy. I find that scissors don't particularly work when you do it that way, though, because they don't get in close enough. So if you just use like a cutter tool, that works. All right. And so that knot is now hidden inside one of our sunstone beads. Okay. All right. Now we're going to repeat this two more times because that's really all there is to this, but practice definitely makes perfect. Um, so seeing this two more times is definitely not gonna hurt anything, right? So we're gonna make another strand of our sunstone beads. So I've got my third piece of elasticity, I'm gonna loop it through the component, all right? We're gonna take the two ends, bring those together. Okay, all right, now eight more. And stone beads. I love these. They're so pretty. And we're going to thread those on to both strands. Okay. So this technique is really going to help you anytime you're doing a strand of elasticity where it's running from one component to another component and you want it to be as seamless as possible because you can't use your standard typical findings on elastic, right? You have no choice but to tie a knot. And a lot of times you want to hide that knot somewhere and you don't want it tied directly to your component. If you tie it directly to your component, not only can you see it, but it also is going to kind of come into contact with outside factors, right? If you've got another bracelet on or whatever, and it's going to rub up against it, just kind of, I don't know, I feel like having an exposed knot at your component kind of, it's like a danger zone, you know? I, I just would constantly be worried that that knot was going to come in contact with something that would take it um, and untie it 
or cause a weak spot in it so that it would break. So this is going to work for all of those things because you can't, you really can't use findings on elasticity. All right, so we've, we've got our eight beads. We're going to split our strands and we're just using the single strand to thread on the last eight beads and then we'll turn around with our elasticity. Okay, so there are our, our, our eight, okay? Our, our, where we split is right here. We're gonna take the tail end of that. We're gonna loop it around our component. Maybe pull some length before we get started. Okay, and let's see. <laughs> pulled that length and then pulled it out of the little pattern here. All right, so we're turning around. We're gonna go back down through those eight beads and meet up with our strand that's waiting on us. Okay, all right, now we've met up with our other strand. Okay, so we're gonna pull those together. Okay, and I'm gonna loop those around two fingers. Okay, take my ends, and loop those through once. One of them's kind of short, so if you've got a short strand, just, just be mindful, don't go too fast. Okay, and loop them through a second time. Grab those ends very slowly, start to pull your fingers out. I, that went way faster than I wanted it to. That kind of happens when one of your strands is a little shorter than the others. That's all right. We still got a good knot out of it. I'm gonna come in with the hypo cement. And the good thing about hiding or having adding the hypo cement is not only are you gluing the knot, but then when you slide it into a bead, when you take that knot, if it'll fit into a bead, let's see if we can get it to go into this one. It actually glues that to the inside of the bead as well. And it just really, really keeps it safe, right? Okay, so we're gonna trim off. We've got three strands done. We're gonna do one more and then we'll put the watch face on it on one end and get just one more double check on our measurement. And then we'll be done, you guys. This works out pretty quickly. It's a cool way if you've got like a, those fitness watches or a smart watch of any kind, or just maybe you've got an antique um, watch face and you need to put a new band on it. Elasticity is a great way to go because you don't have to, you don't have to mess with any findings, right? You can just slip it on and slip it off. All right, so here's our last piece of elasticity for our fourth strand. We're just gonna repeat this first strand with the check glass beads. So take it, loop it through the component, bring your two ends together, and we're gonna repeat that pattern with those really beautiful check glass beads. So we're gonna do three check glass beads and daisy spacers. I'm gonna do four sets of those. Okay. Those are going to go on both strands. Okay, daisy spacer. 
three more. And a daisy spacer. Another group of the check glass. A daisy spacer. Now remember our check glass beads don't have a super large hole on them. So we use our daisy spacer as our way to hide that knot when we get to that point. So with this strand, I like to finish with a daisy spacer and then we'll meet up with that daisy spacer with our elasticity on the other side. Okay, so there's three and we're gonna do that daisy spacer there. All right, now we're gonna split the two strands and we're gonna thread on the rest of the beads. So we've got three more little groups of these. Of our daisy spacers. Oops. Daisy spacer and the last three beads. Oops. <laughs> okay, now take the end. If you need to stretch out some length so that you just don't pull, don't pull too much and lose that, that strand that's waiting on us. Got to be careful because elasticity is slippery <laughs> and it wants to just slide right through those beads. All right, so we're taking our strand, we're looping it through the component, and then we're going to go back down through all the beads that we just added. On one hand, it's good that it's slippery because it very easily can be double, you know, you can thread through double times, multiple times if you need to a bead. Uh, but the downside of that is that it does want to slide off of the beads, or the beads want to slide off of it, rather. Okay, we've got one more bead and we will be meeting up at that daisy spacer in the middle. Okay, so we wanna pull. Just pull out any extra links that you've got, right? Those are gonna meet up nice and neat. Take your two strands, wrap them around your two fingers, okay? And then wrap or go around once. One of my strands is really short. I'm afraid this one's going to slide really quickly too. Just have to be really careful. And then around a second time. And if you can hold everything in place, slide your fingers out. There we go. You just got to go slow. I get a little excited. It slips through my fingers, but I'm not letting go of that loop until that last minute, right? And you can see how that knot looks. It's kind of hard to see that knot because it's clear, but it really does create a, a nice barrel style knot, right? It's nice and tight. It's secure. There's no slipping or sliding that's happening there at all. This is definitely, at least in my opinion, the most dependable knot for stretchy material. Okay. I'm going to stretch that out nice and far away from the bracelet to add my last little drop 
of glue. All right, put the lid back on that. And then I'm gonna slide it right into that daisy spacer, which is not, it's not nearly as deep as the other beads, but it does help to hide it, right? If you get it positioned just right, and then come in with the cutter tool to trim all that off. And you've got yourself a four strand <laughs> that I need to <laughs> untangle here. You've got yourself a really beautiful four strand bracelet design that's stretchy. You don't have to use any findings for it. And let's put the watch face on one end so that we can double check our measurement. Okay, so that just kind of, I don't know if, if any of you have trouble with this, but I'm just gonna show you how to get this on and off of here. So to slide it out, I say that and then I can't, you're gonna push the little button on most of the smartwatch faces, there's a little button here. It's just a little release mechanism. And on the finding itself, there's a rubber stopper right here. And that rubber stopper comes in contact with whatever is on the inside of this. So you don't have to push anything when you slide it on, but if you're trying to take it off, just know that on most of them, you gotta push the little button and then slide, okay? All right, so when I lay this out before we attach the other end, I'm going to take a little measurement and you can see, I know that the strands are not perfectly even, but when you pull them, those are as even as they're gonna get. And when you have this on that extra slack, that's gonna pull right out of there, okay? So don't, don't be concerned with that part. All right, so let's take one more measurement. We're not quite at seven and a half inches. We're at about seven and a fourth, but remember, this is one thing that I meant to say previously. When we're talking about elasticity and elastic bracelets where there is not, um, there's not any uh, clasp or anything like that, and you just wanna slide this on, you want to take all of that into consideration when, you're, when you are putting your bracelet on. So if you want your bracelet, if you want your stretch, band to lay nice and flat up against your skin, then you want that elasticity to do its job and contract to hold that shape, right? So having something a little bit shorter kind of helps to make it fit like it wants. I, basically what I'm saying is, is that when I want an elastic band on something, I want it to fit a snug up against me. And so I take that into consideration, right? We've got seven and a fourth inches here, but that's going to stretch to seven and a half to get on, but then it's going to come back down and contract to that seven and a fourth, and it's going to lay nice and tight up against your skin. So those are just some little things to take into consideration, consideration when you're talking about elastic um, stringing materials, right? So I'm just going to take the other end, slide that on, and we've got ourselves a beautiful bracelet on one side, but a functional watch on the other. So, so pretty works out really, really well. And you can really customize, right? I just picked out some beads that I thought were really, really pretty. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking ahead to spring and those blossoms that are gonna be coming here before you know it. Um, but you really can customize this in, in your favorite colors, right? And that makes it just a little bit more personalized than just a regular band that maybe you bought with it, so. All right, guys, I'm gonna turn you around and we will say our goodbyes. I do want to thank you guys for your patience at the beginning. I, it's just, I think everybody has those days where, you know, it just your brain just turns off. It took mine a second to get realigned with what I was doing. And so I, I appreciate your patience with that. We did end up with a great project, right? And a technique or two techniques, because remember that knot is a super, it's a super strong knot that technique, you're gonna take that anywhere you go. And then if you need seamless designs between two components, whether it's for a watch or whether it is just between two components and there's a focal in the center, that technique is a great one to have. Just took me a minute to remember what I was doing, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, you guys. I hope I have inspired you. Maybe you've got, maybe you've got a smart watch that's just laying around and you don't wear it because of the band. Now you know how to change it out and turn it into something that is personal to you that you will really enjoy wearing. 
All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me this Saturday. I appreciate it. I'll be back with you guys again very soon with another fun project. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Bye.